Hello everyone, thanks for joining. My name is Michelle Choate with IBM WebSphere and this is the first of a broadcast that we'll do regarding comparing WebSphere to open source. On this webcast I have with me Solomon Barguthi and Roman Karkowski. Solomon, you want to introduce yourself? Yes, thanks Michelle. Hi everybody, my name is Solomon Barguthi. Um, I am um, with the product management team in, in the WebSphere application server foundation. And uh, before that, I was part of the development organization of the app server. Actually, been there for a long time. Um, most recently, I was the release architect for the WebSphere application server version 8.5 release that um, shipped the exciting Liberty profile and also the intelligent management, among other things. Back to you, Michelle. And Roman, tell us about yourself. Hey, Roman Harkovsky, Worldwide WebSphere Technical Sales Team. I'm technical lead on the competitive research team. We do hands-on testing of IBM products and competitive products. We work with open source and other vendor products. And we do performance testing, feature function comparison, strategy research, technical research, hands-on tests. We don't have to make things work. We just break things. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> Lucky you, Roman. Great. So thanks. I have uh, two of our brightest minds in uh, Webster with me on the call. So I, I wanted to spend the next 10 or 15 minutes talking to these guys. And, uh, and Solomon, maybe to kick this off, what, what do organizations um, care about when they're choosing an application server? And why, you know, what are the areas that, that we should focus on when comparing open source to WebSphere? And this is a very good question, Michelle. And honestly, it's not just simply when you're comparing an open source to WebSphere. It's when you're looking at any application server, whether it's IBM or not IBM. Um, sometimes I, I hear people just look at things from, well, here's with this app server, and I have an application that that application simply runs. And I don't really care for any, you know, an app server is an app server. You hear this a lot. And, and for me, I kind of look at it and, and say, this is true statement, but that's only if you're looking at it from, I want to test my application that does it run or not. Because quite frankly, all these application servers that are out there these days are, are for the most part, are Java EE compliant app servers. And technically speaking, an application that is written to be a Java 2 EE or Java EE, um, um, to follow the Java EE standards should, for the most part, run unchanged. However, the things that we, we really need to look into or, or, or organization need to look into is, one, the development aspect of it. What does it take for me to develop an application? Do I have the needed toolings um, that are, are required to develop an application? Are these toolings um, going to give me the ability to do things quick and fast? Because time to market is huge. Um, this is one aspect of things. Second aspect is scalability and performance. Am I going to pick an application server that simply runs, but I'm not going to be able to scale when my business grow and perform very well and get some bad customer um, um, feedback and hence go to my competition? Or do I need to pick an application server that I do not have to worry about my business increasing by another 30% next year, and now I'm in trouble because it won't be able to scale very well? And of course, the next item is resiliency of the environment. And what that means is that I can run an environment, and as we all know, I mean, we're all techie people, we're IT people, we understand that um, software is, is, is there and, and bugs do get, get involved. Machines are destined to fail and die, and therefore you need to look into this from your environment as in how would my environment react if, if, I, if one of my machines crashes? How, how would my environment react if one of my JVMs dies? Or I have an excessive memory usage because I have a bad application that was written. Am I going to end up crashing everything? Am I going to end up affecting my end user customers? Or am I going to get things done in a way that my end users, and this is very, very critical, that your end users never know what's going on in your environment, whether it's up or down, or it's in the process of recovering from a problem. And of course, lastly, and, and I think this is an item that many, many people tend to forget about, is problem determination. When problems do happen, do you have the needed um, tools that will help you fix these problems or determine these problems fast enough to be able to fix them, or are you going to take a long time to try to address these issues, which will, again, keep you from making money? The longer you are offline, the, lo the, the less money you're going to be making for your organization, and the unhappy your customers are going to be, and hence you're going to lose them to your competition. I agree with Solomon that 
there are a lot of different considerations and we can't cover every single one in this webcast but I'd say for this webcast we decided to discuss problem determination isolation tools because that's definitely one of the more difficult things to run keep it running and if things go wrong figure out what went wrong and why and how to fix it and that's where we found quite a significant differences between open source and web sphere specifically so Roman can you kind of take us through some of those differences how is open source different than what IBM offers in the in the, in the area of problem determination and specifically the tooling because the things that we provide with the product of the differences in problem determination tooling that we build with WebSphere and we ship and we make it available to our customers. Uh, so we bundle all of these with what we call IBM Electronic Support Assistant. So all of the IBM customers who have WebSphere licenses, they can use this tool. It's called ISA. And as you could see, there are quite a few useful things that we ship it and with Tomcat open source uh, versions of uh, Tomcat or JBoss or even with JBoss EAP enterprise application platform most of these tools are missing. For example, I understand how to take a thread dump but how do I read the content of it? I understand how to get a heap dump to try to find out if there's any memory leaks but how do I really read them? And I can tell you, I mean me being, I mean, I've been in this, in this um, IT business I guess for about 14 years now and, and I remember the, the initial days when you had to generate the thread dump and you had to go understand how to read them and you go from one JDK to the next, one level to the next. And some, some little tweak will happen that you need to now adjust to your knowledge of it. Um, and now you can see all this visually. Um, so IBM gives you the ability to actually look at the thread dumps and understand exactly what's going on, what kind of locking happens. Um, furthermore, from a heap memory perspective, I mean, this is one of the most difficult areas that you need to address is how do I understand how exactly where the memory leak is coming from on a production system and of course you need to make sure that you do it and you do it fast and therefore generating the heap dump and taking too long for you to try to address the issue will, will every, every second counts and the tooling that we do provide you it will make you an expert in finding problems really really quickly because and again it's all done in a visual way that you do not need to have a PhD in reading tools or reading log files um, or trace dumps to try to understand what's going on. So I think what you're saying is with open source you have to be um, a lot more adept at reading through dumps because you don't have the, the tools to help you present that in a meaningful way to read them more easily, both thread and, and memory dumps. That's right. So, so in, in one case it's either you need to understand how to read thread dumps and, and I can tell you maybe some people will make the argument, yep, I've been doing this for years so I don't really care. Um, heap dumps the same way, and and but it's a lot more than that, right? I mean, it's it's if you are that guru who can read thread dumps and heap dumps really quickly and analyze them by all means. Um, I mean, we're not remember this is free tools coming from IBM. We're not actually selling them. Um, for those who are normal like like us here, right? Who who just simply find it a bit more difficult for me to actually go through the heap dumps or thread dumps, particularly if you're trying to run on a multiple operating systems. I mean, don't assume that all environments gonna be um, unified in terms of what JDK or what operating systems they are running. They might be running an AIX and, and a Linux and a Windows and therefore the output of these might be a bit different from one to the other that you need to take things under account when you're looking at it. So if you happen to run on uh, Open JDK, you may not get some of these tools but with Oracle JDK you do some uh, get some of these tools and other tools are not available at all. Um, and, and going back to this skills person who can read the dumps and so forth I mean look at carpenters uh, they have to have tools to be productive and to do quality to work carpenter or plumber or anybody needs a good quality tool it's the same thing with software if you have a trouble in production you need to do that resolution quickly because downtime costs money and having good tools that automatically help you find the root cause of the issue is a huge help. It could save you a lot of money by avoiding or shortening the downtime. IBM Trace and Request Analyzer. So that's a thing that allows you to correlate the flow of requests across multiple tiers of your web application. So let's say you have HTTP servers and then you have a cluster of app servers and may you may even have 
remote EJB. So the trace and request analyzer can trace your request all the way through HTTP plugin to app servers and you could see what's going on, how much time it takes and then it can even do the profiling like on this uh, screen you could see that there is a profiling capability in WebSphere so it will actually profile your application uh, through servlet it can tell you how much time is spent on what part inside of the G GNDI lookups and EJB and JDBC now you can do some of this with third-party tools like you can buy JProbe and you can you can spend money buy the licenses for this uh, some of these tools like profilers but with WebSphere App Server you get them for free with open source you would have to pay for those tools. So I thought open source was free. Yeah, no, it is free, but it's free to start. But then to keep going, you have to put in uh, some effort. And that effort, in many cases, could be quite significant. Um, or another example, we have very advanced health management tools in WebSphere app server network deployment. So the health management can do a lot more than just JVM and memory um, tuning. It can prevent certain things from happening or it can actually do some corrective actions. Uh, so you can set certain health conditions like excessive garbage collection events. You can configure those health conditions and then you can automatically take action on those things when they happen. What that really means is a lot of those issues in runtime in production can be fixed by you administrator configuring those health policies ahead of time and instead of walking with pager and sleeping with pager and jumping into the terminal window or opening the console when things went bad and now you have to fix them you can configure these policies in advance and then the app server will enforce these policies based on the conditions that you specify. So there are a lot of interesting things that we do in WASND uh, to keep the application going. Uh, for example, the thread pools or connection pools or database connections or prepared statement caching. These are some of the few issues that, that most likely will run you into a lot of trouble if you're not configured correctly from a performance perspective. Performance is key, scalability is, is, is huge. Okay, for you to be able to determine what your setting should be, right? you need to understand and configure your connection pool and prepared statement um, um, correctly, among other things, of course, from a thread pool perspective. So let's take an example where I'm going to use um, what, what Roman covered from an intelligent management and health policies perspective, where you can direct your environment, have a health policy that states, by the way, from, and you saw it in the drop-down box that Roman showed in his chart from the number of health policies, is if my response time gets into some level or if I have um, a, um, the number of timeouts, for example, because I, this might indicate that the database is not behaving correctly, um, can I send me an email? I mean, you have multiple actions. Um, some of the actions you have either send me an email, another one could be restart the application server, um, um, and a third one take the application server in an offline mode to allow me to debug it later. So let's say that your response time changes and that's causing you issues. Um, one of the things that come as part of the IBM support assistance, which is actually built into the JDK, is this, this um, Java Health Center. What Java Health Center and the beauty of it is the performance impact that comes from enabling the Java Health Center. Most monitoring tools that you get typically have a hefty um, performance impact on your system and then therefore you do not enable it um, unless you, you are basically in major trouble because you want to debug the issues. But the benefit of the health center is that the, the impact, and of course you need to test it in your own environment to just get the actual impact to yours, but we see it is roughly le about a roughly little less than 3% of the performance tune-in toolkit. Um, and that one is an Eclipse-based tool that you can literally point to your application server and connect to it, and that will give you a view of the application server of the size of your connection pools, for example, whether you, you're exhausting the pool and that's why you're having these issues, um, what kind of timeouts you have and whether you can improve things upon it um, and, and much, much more. We're showing on the screen some of the tuning recommendations from the performance toolkit and as you can see on this screen we have a background thread inside of WAS runtime that does the analysis as the application is handled 
and as it runs in production and then we generate the report and some recommendations uh, so in this case you could see some recommendations generated so I don't have to be experienced yep. uh, administrator to really understand what it says and it actually is a good way to learn what needs to be done so it's not that I, I have to be trying all kinds of different things I'm actually being told what is going on and what can be done to change and make it better. You don't need to be an expert. If you look at it, it will give you the things in red that basically, and, and your application appears to be leaking memory. So this is like a major problem. And if you look at it, and Roman, if you can show the one in red here, okay, versus the one in yellow that says, by the way, you see your application seems to be issuing system.gc, which is a big no-no, right? And you have two of them because we understand that that causes performance issues. So, but, but yet it's yellow, it's not red, because this is something might, you might be doing intentionally. So as you see in here, it's all in plain English. So back to you, Roman. Carry on for yeah, the, yeah. the next one. Uh, and then you can also see a comparison of different runs of the same application using different techniques for the garbage collection. So you can send generational concurrent or optimized throughput garbage collection policies and then you get the report over the test run of your application. This is what was going on and you can decide which one is better, more suitable for your kind of application. So again, this is side-by-side -side comparison, very detailed. Uh, and then you can also see graphs and you could see what is the percentage span the, on garbage collection and all kinds of interesting data so that you can learn more about the behavior of your application so you could see the uh, spikes where you could see the sizes of uh, heap that trigger garbage collection cycles and the frequency with which it happens uh, and then you could compare those side by side and on the left hand side you can see here are different tools so this is actually a picture of the IBM Electronic Support Assistant, where you could see uh, we have those tools as plugins inside of the Electronic Support Assistant, so you can launch those tools from one place, uh, and then you can monitor uh, the memory utilization on servers, the response times, and you can filter, you can record, you can replay, you can connect to multiple different JVMs remotely, uh, and then you can see statistics on for instance, on the pools and threads and those kinds of things, memory leak suspect report, you could see component report, and then uh, in this case I'm using the leak suspect report, and it basically pinpoints which classes in your application are probably leaking memory, so it just gives you a breakdown of these classes uh, so you, that you can work with the developer of that application, so this is basically the tool for production but then you can take the data that it generates, give it to developer, and they can hopefully fix the application. And then you can drill down into specifics, and you can drill down by references. So it's very rich set of data, including deadlock detection, where it can tell you which threads are deadlocked, and uh, it can analyze the state of your JVM. And in this example, it shows you the state of the threads real time, and in this example, in this screenshot, you could see some of the threads are running, some working, and then the things in dark gray, you could see two threads in this case, it says deadlock. And what Roman is showing right now is the whywebsphere.com blog, where we will post this video as well as uh, lots of other information that, are, that is already out there that you can access. And then we also mentioned the uh, developer works. Um, so if you Google WebSphere Developer Works, you can download WebSphere Application Server and uh, the IBM Support Assistant and so forth are, um, are available there um, as well. Uh, but we are planning to actually hold some sessions on problem determination, particularly um, in, in a lot of countries worldwide, of course, including North America here where we at. Thanks, Solomon, and thanks, Roman, for joining us. And um, I. Wish you all a good day, and uh, thanks for joining us.